Hi there. Today Milo and I are going to be continuing working on our desensitization. So today we're going to move on from just laying recumbent and I'm going to work a little bit on just getting to touch the feet. I'm not really going to touch them with anything yet. I am going to get out the bag of junk but I'm not going to touch him with anything in it yet. Hi, babe. I'm just going to work on getting him comfortable with me touching his feet. And so the big thing with this is going to be that um, since his laying recumbent uh, behavior is really strong, he will lay really still. So any movement, if he moves his paw away, if he lifts his head, I take that as a stop cue. So I remove my hand immediately. And I'll show this, but basically the way this works is I will reach for him and if he moves at all away from me or lifts his head or any of that then I will immediately remove my hand and then the next time I try I might try further away so I'm not just going to be grabbing his feet I'm going to be slowly working my way closer to him kind of varying it in difficulty just to kind of get him more comfortable with me touching him in that way before I really start introducing any of the tools or the, the things in the junk drawer any of that kind of stuff so I'm gonna go get all of my stuff to get set up and then uh, we will get started. Okay, so same as before, I have my bag of junk, which I'm just gonna set off to the side to stop blocking the view, as well as some clippers, uh, some a Dremel, my clicker, Milo's mat, and then also today I have for treats some Fresh Pet, which is again actually a type of frozen dog food but um, it's something that is really taste, tastes good to them and it's also very easy for treats and uh, I don't have to cut anything up or anything like that. So it's just easy and convenient and one of the things I use. So to get started, once again, I'm going to lay his mat down. Can you get up? Thank you. And I'm gonna lay the mat down and wait for him to lay on it. And I'll reward him for that. And now I'm gonna wait for him to lay down recumbent. Make sure he lay down in frame, yes. So I'm just going to wait him out. So now that he's laid down, I'm going to come over to this side because I want to be on the side where his feet are. Let me angle this a little bit. Okay, so the way that this is going to work is he's laying here and I'm not just going to reach for his feet. I'm just going to reach my hand towards him and click. And you can see how he was kind of starting to move. So this time I'm not going to reach quite as close once he's had his treat and puts his head back down. So I'm gonna put my, and so I'm gonna take any movement as a no. So I'm gonna put my hand out here, good. And this can also be back and front feet. So I move around where I'm reaching. So now I'm gonna to reach towards his back feet. And then I got a lot closer because I know that he personally is more comfortable with his back feet being touched on his front feet. That'll be different depending on the dog. So again, I'm just gonna put my hand near him, but not touching him at the moment. And so since Milo so clearly laid down him, with his feet facing completely away from the camera, and I'm actually going to switch to a recording away, so that I made at a later date when we were in class harder, practicing kind of so that you can actually look, see better harder, what harder. I'm doing and what he's game. doing. So, so uh, this video actually goes on for a so bit, but six. since you can't really see, yeah, I'm just, just going to skip to one where you can actually see a little bit better. So in this video, I am with Milo in a class environment, so we are working around other dogs is a little bit more distracting, so I'm really taking it easy with him. But you can see that he's already laying recumbent on his mat, and I am just reaching out and trying to touch his feet. With his back feet, I'm being a little more bold than his front feet. With his front feet, I am very gently touching 
Um, sometimes I'm touching near the foot. Sometimes I'm touching um, the foot itself. Uh, I do try to get more of a solid grip at some point because you want to work up to the type of grip you would need to have on their foot to to clip it or to drum it or anything like that. So I try to get my hand in the right position so that I can also be pushing down on their toe to extend the nail, but I work up to that. So if he moves, I'm pulling away. And if he moves a couple times, I won't go back for that same spot. I'll bring it back and sort of reach a little further away. So if he um, flinches there, I would have pulled away. But since he didn't, I just sort of pinched the toe and then rewarded him. And there he does flinch away, and so I try again, and he allows me. If he had flinched away again, I probably wouldn't have reached for the same foot again. I might have just put my hand nearby. And he did sit up briefly there because of a disturbance in the class, but he flopped right back down, which showed me that he was still engaged, still wanting to participate, still um, willing to play the game. If he had gotten up and wandered around, um, I would have known that he probably was a little resistant to coming back, that maybe the session had been going on too long or I was asking too much of him. So that can be a really good cue as to where they're at if um, you can only do a few things and then they get up and they walk away and they don't really come back quickly or they even sit up and just don't lay back down quickly. It's a pretty good sign that um, maybe they were being pushed too hard or they just weren't comfortable with what was happening. But since... Um, he's kind of recovering there quickly. Even when he pulls away, he puts his, his leg back down quickly. So I'm um, proceeding kind of as normal, trying to vary my difficulty. And that top leg, the one that's not resting on the ground, is his most sensitive. So I'm not really even trying to touch that foot. I'm trying to touch him just on the shoulder or the elbow near it so that I can work my way down towards that foot because it is the one that he's most sensitive about. And even when I'm trying to touch the other foot, he'll pull that one away. And I will take that as a no signal from him just because I'll take really any movement as a no signal. And if he does pull away, I will try to wait until he relaxes again. So even if he puts, he doesn't, isn't pulling away anymore, um, he might still hold that paw back or hold it aloft and kind of not fully relaxed and he'll hold all that tension in his body and so I'll wait for him to relax that tension, rest his paws back on the ground again before I try to progress with any other attempts. <clears throat> and then once I've got a couple good ones, I toss some treats and send him off the mat and say okay we're done for the day because that was really successful. <laughs>